All right, welcome to the Saturday morning wake up call. Here it's a production of the Far North Tactical Show. Uh, basically, it's a show produced by, made by Far North Tactical and Bighorn Enterprises. And uh, here to represent this morning from Bighorn Enterprises. Representing. That's right. Josh Bennett, good morning, Josh. Good morning. Good to be back. You had a little uh, time out of town in pursuit of the great Alaska Nungulet. Did you fill your freezer? Yes. It's overflowing. Nice. Nice feeling. <laughs> well, congratulations, sir. You've had your man card validated. Thank you. Yeah, right. It was wonderful. Man. So, so while you were gone, the world basically uh, fell apart a little bit more. I noticed. Uh, we've got uh, QE3 got passed. That's awesome. So it means that our, our dollar is going to be worth less basically any day now. Daily, We should I think, be no. seeing the prices going up on basically everything. Yeah. Which I, I I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me. I, I really look forward to having a winter in which my paycheck stays the same, and the price to heat my home and the price to feed my family goes up. I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> winter time is just the best time of year to have that happen too. Yeah, yeah. But, I noticed I came. Uh, my boy shot a moose and uh, brought it back, and I was like, well, I wonder what's going on in the world. So I kind of check and. <laughs> that was the first thing I read. <laughs> QE3, eighty billion dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And bad mortgages they're going to buy. And then who knows how much money they're going to print and, that, and throw and, and print and throw. and Buying bad mortgages. Now, that's that didn't have anything to do with the crash of 2008, did it? Oh, of course not. All right. So, so we're, we're, in, we're good. We're in good good shape because Excellent they're doing shape. that. has nothing to do with what Ron Paul talked about in 2001. All right. 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah. This guy called it 11 years so ago. So obviously he was wrong, though, because, I mean, he had said it 11 years ago, and it didn't happen for 11 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. the guy's going to be a prophet of some kind. You'd expect it to happen right away, well, right? Well, at least within a week. Uh, right, right. Well, which, of course, the same kind of a situation. Now, you've got uh, not just Libya, but uh, it's the last count I saw was over 20 different countries where our embassies were under attack or under siege. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, yeah, I heard about the Libya and Egypt and uh, yeah. Tunisia. I don't, yeah, I don't India, know. yeah, Tunisia, India, Pakistan. I'm sure all the stands you know, are getting after exactly. It. And uh, it, to, to have the administration basically blaming an American for exercising his free speech, <laughs> to me, that makes perfect sense because uh, both parties have been trying to restrict our free speech for some time now. I wondered if it had anything to do with. Uh, of course, I was out of town, so I'm kind of pe- trying to puzzle right, piece right, everything. Right. And uh, one of the things I read that someone said that Hillary Clinton said was something about how she was just flabbergasted that these ungrateful wretches were attacking us at our embassy in Libya because we just mm-hmm. freed them, obviously, gave them our good old democracy by the bomb. And I thought, well, I wonder maybe if besides this movie or whatever, I haven't seen the movie. Mm-hmm. I don't even really know mm-hmm. what it is about. But anyways, maybe it had something to do with... Uh, Maybe we bombed someone's little kid, or his wife, or his whole family, or his mom, or his dad, or maybe that's why they got pissed off. Uh, when we were freeing them with our bombs, you know, the greatest freedom of all is when you kill someone. Right. That frees them from Oh, but you don't have everything. to worry about anything after that, exactly. Right. How, those, how dare those wretches? <laughs> they should be grateful we killed all their family. You know, it, back. It, it's funny because I actually had a, one of my coworkers ask me this week, why are they so angry at us? And I said, oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe it could have to do with the fact that as far back as I can remember, my, basically my entire life, the United States of America has been exporting our version of the world. And whatever, and you want to call it democracy, you want to call it capitalism, you want to call it whatever. Basically, we have been invading countries and either toppling what we call tyrants, their whatever form of government they've chosen. Right. And we don't like them, so we're going to come in, we're going to liberate them from that form of government. In some cases, you know, going back a little further, back to the 1930s, we actually eliminated d- uh, democratically elected governments and put in our own dictators that were more friendly to our, our business <coughs> interests down there. But for as Iran, long as I, exactly, the 50s. I, exactly. I ran with the Shah. 
And then you've we got... We installed him. We he did. was brutal dictator. Absolutely. We installed uh, Mubarak, right? Or at least we helped In him Egypt, stay yep. there. Mm-hmm. Kept him there. Pretty much kept uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Yep. Well, and was. look at Gaddafi in, just by himself. Back in 1986, mm-hmm. okay, I remember very clearly, there I was a too. bomb that went off in a discotheque in Germany. Yeah. Killed uh, at least one, possibly more Americans. He, they were targeted, and we found out, or at least it was announced to the world, that it was a Libyan who did it. Mm-hmm. Those crazy Libyans are out there bombing our Americans. We need to go teach them a lesson. And so we sent off these fighter jets loaded with bombs, and we bombed the snot out of Libya. I remember, remember that. that in oh, Tripoli. Yeah. I mean, we um, we nearly flattened the place, and that and, and all of America was, yay! Look at Reagan; he's such a strong president. Yay. And if you think about it, what would happen, Josh, if some crazy American, just on his own, decided to go and bomb the Canadian consulate? Just say, you know. Wouldn't Canada be a little upset over that? Yeah. Well, would Canada then be justified in launching a bombing raid Absolutely. on on the United States? Of course. Because one American if, went and did it, even if that American was acting. If you use our logic, of course. Well, well exactly. Even if that if, even if that person was acting with the full backing of his government in doing so, at the point when you turn and you start attacking another country or attacking the people of another country. You are the one that's escalating things. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember that really well. The F-111s, mm-hmm. two of them. France wouldn't let us fly over, mm-hmm. and uh, they bombed them. And who was the one that got killed out of that whole thing? One of Gaddafi's sons, wasn't it? Daughter. No daughter. I think mm-hmm. she was six years old. That wouldn't. That wouldn't have any effect on his mentality at all. No. In terms of. I mean, saying. that was good retaliation right oh, there. Right. We killed yeah. a six-year-old mm-hmm. girl. It's pretty good. That's pretty sick. So we wonder why these people hate us. Maybe because we've been killing them for at least 60 years. I mean, I'm not trying to... I definitely don't justify them killing our consulate and our no, ambassadors. No, not at all. But, but that's the if whole we point. we weren't there, though. Is that you and I are eschewing violence. We are not saying... And, you know, you hear people say, oh, that's collateral damage. It should be expected that a couple of... Civilian, that's war. That's, that's the way war well, that's, well, that's just war. John. War is horrible, Steve. Absolutely it is. And that's why I'm against we it. We should be against it. And we shouldn't be exporting it, and we shouldn't be waving the flag and calling people to go to war over anything. How many times do we hear when uh, some drone goes over, we bomb somebody oh killed number 880 you know he's not number one number two he's number 880 in the al-qaeda list whatever so we got the bad guy everyone cheers hello or huzzah i meant and then after you start reading the story whatever and 23 civilians were killed in the meantime or we killed this guy at a wedding and killed 56 people along the way uh we killed this guy and there was collateral damage of another 20 30, 20, 30. That adds up into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And we wonder why they hate us. If someone came over, flying their little drone around, and uh, I was walking around minding my own business with my family, and some bad dude happened to be in my vicinity, and drone drops Hellfire missile on him, takes out my family. I'm not going to be pissed off at the guy that they shot at. I'm going to be pissed off at the guy that shot. And you might even, weapon. at that point, say, you know what? Why did they want to kill him so bad? And they just killed my family. Now I want to go kill them. I'm going to go join up with that guy. Yeah. And, you, know, you think with the... I, I'm really That's buying... That's the real collateral I am damage. really buying into this, that we actually have been perpetuating these wars ourselves. I, I say we, the United States. That we have been giving fuel to those who want to kill us. Mm-hmm. And giving them recruitment tools by the way in which we have been indiscriminately killing non combatants. It's that same, uh, that whack job we were talking about earlier, Ron Paul. He called it blowback. What do you think these people are going to do? You're going to go over there and kill them, and you're going to be surprised that they hate us back. And I'm sorry to say that, uh, when George Bush got up there and gave his little speech and uh, after 9-11, he said, they hate us for our freedom. I don't buy that. It's 
garbage. They don't hate us for our freedom. They obviously hate us. There are a certain amount of people there that do hate us very drastically, and I don't like them necessarily either. They don't hate us because we're over here free and we can go moose hunting and sit here and have a radio show or whatever. The reason they hate us is because we've been over there since at least, we can at least point at the 30s or the 50s during the Iran conflict, or not the Iran conflict, but the Shah and all that. We can at least point back to there and say, we've been in their business for the last 60 years. Or at least we can say we've been in their business for 50 years and they finally retaliated. I mean, Osama bin Laden's finally dead, hooray. Well, well, one of the reasons that he said, he didn't say, the reason we bombed your towers is because of your freedom. He said, you've been in my business, in my country, for 40 years. You've set these people up. You've murdered these people. you set up other people who murder my people. On and on and on. I mean, Russia invaded Afghanistan, and we sent them weapons. And then we go around and do the same. We're, it's asinine. I mean, we're on a path... We're on a path of destruction. Kind on of like the that, eve of destruction. Kind of like that like song that we yeah. started the, the show I mean, with. It's yeah. absolutely unreal that we're perpetuating this over and over. It doesn't matter who you put in office. I mean, you get Mr. Obama who said, I'll get, my, get us out of the walls, get us out of Afghanistan, get us out of Iraq. Bull crap. Well, I just heard somebody last night saying how he's kept all of his promises, that he got us out of Afghanistan and he got us out of Iraq. And I'm like, uh, what kind of... I got a big bowl. They're what smoking. Are, what are, I'm serious. What are you on? Yeah, I just remember back in 2003 when we invaded Iraq and there was that spokesman from Saddam Hussein getting on the TV <laughs> in front of all these international reporters saying, no, oh, the Americans are not in Baghdad. And meanwhile, you can actually see the American troops behind him in yeah. the same screenshot. That's what these guys are sounding like now for the Obama administration and saying, oh, he's kept his promises. But you know what? What kind of promises is Romney making? Same ones. No, he's going even worse because now they are talking about escalating against Iran. Oh yeah. And they're they're talking about right now with everything that's going on with uh, the nuclear thing. That's, uh, again, we can't allow them to get the nuclear bomb. We can't allow it. You no, know, I've had problems with neighbors before in the past, but I have never in my wildest dreams thought that it was okay for me to go and prevent my neighbor from. Defending himself. It's pretty amazing when uh, we're talking about them just accumul- acquiring a nuclear weapon, we're willing to go nuke them. I mean, all the cards are on the table, right? We'll nuke them. Nukes kill everyone. So we're willing to go not just kill the bad guys, but there's like human beings that live in Iran. It's kind of weird. There's videos where you can... There's no human beings there. Guys. Hang on a second. You're not, you're not on yet, Aaron. But now you're on. Go ahead. There's no humans there? No, there's no humans there. They're all brown. Oh. Wow. Well, wow. Never mind. <laughs> well, I guess that, 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 that's it. You've silenced all of our arguments. I mean, the real reason... Uh, it's, uh, no, that's the mentality Americans have. Something that you guys were saying when I was driving in here that struck me is uh, the mentality that Americans have is that we can go kill as many people as we want, but if we get retaliated against, everybody needs to die. Right. That's insanity. We we think that we deserve to not be retaliated against. For like this bully, that if he ever gets hit, he runs the principal. <laughs> well, no, we're in shock that anybody would even dare think to do something like that. That's because we're righteous and holy people, Aaron. Oh, yeah. we got a God-given mandate to dominate the world. Of course we do. We're With not our democracy. We're not brown. I mean, we ought to be get to giving everyone our democracy. Look how well we've got. We've got 16 trillion in debt. We've got 20, 222 trillion in uh, unfunded uh, liabilities. Who wouldn't want that? We've got mass murders in our backyards. We've got an overreaching government that spies on everything that you do. We, we put people in jail for speaking out against the government, and we let people out of jail who rape children. Hmm. It's a great democracy. We need to export more of that action. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, uh, we're exporting our democracy so we can give everyone the privilege of using our dollar. That's exactly what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Why why did I rant? I mean, just put all the bull crap aside. The only reason we're messing with Iran is because they're going to go away from the U.S. They're not trading in petrodollars. They're only accepting gold now for their oil. Right. 
and they talked a long time ago we're going to quit using the u.s dollar to trade oil and that's the only thing that keeps our u.s dollar hello folks this is actually pretty important the only thing that keeps your currency that little piece of paper that's in your pocket worth anything the only reason you're still able to go down and buy a snickers bar with a couple bucks is because the world is using that dollar to trade oil as soon as they stop you're done you're so i mean we're so done it's not even funny that's why when iran says something about not using the dollar to trade oil we got to ramp it up and kill them when iraq stopped using the u.s dollar to trade oil we went in there and we killed them that's the only reason we do this i mean the only reason saudi arabia it's not because they have oil that we don't go in there and nuke them or whatever I mean, because they're terrorists. We know that those guys are actually really terrorists. The king... Uh, Osama bin Laden actually <laughs> was a Saudi. Right. And the king, mm. we know, finances terrorism. The king, uh, Abdullah, Bala, whatever his name is. Well, the only reason that we haven't taken them out is because they're still using the U.S. dollar. If they quit, any of those countries that quit using the U.S. dollar, we take them out. That is the real reason why any of this is happening is because of the U.S. dollar. Because when they quit using that... You won't be able to go, you can get all the money out of your bank. In fact, you can go down to the bank and take all the money out of the bank and you won't be able to buy a Snickers bar because it won't be worth squat. And do you think that our government sees that inevitability coming down? That's why they just passed QE3, Aaron. Do you think that's why they passed Executive Order uh, 13603? I don't know. That anymore. That's where they get the, they granted themselves the right, um, it's called the National Defense Resources Preparedness Act. <laughs> And basically what it, the gist of it is, is in peacetime in a national emergency, it gives the government the authority to take control of the economy for national defense and asserts the power to control general distribution of all any and all materials in the civilian market. That includes food, energy, health resources, all forms of transportation, water resources, building materials, facilities, and all, all related construction materials. And incidentally, in case anybody's wondering if that's something that was just dreamed up by Obama, what it's doing no. is renewing something, that the Defense Production Act of 1950. <laughs> Which was, uh, in 1994, was renewed again. Yeah, I remember when Clinton did it, because all the uh, Republicans went nuts. Like, ah! Look what this freak show's doing! He's doing like, uh, yeah, this is just a renewal. Wasn't it, was it Eisenhower that first... Well, let's see, 1950, that would have been... Oh, no. No, no, this was before. This was under Truman still. That was Truman, yeah. Because 1950 was when there was the the election. Eisenhower won, so he wouldn't have been president until January of 1951. Hmm. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. Yeah, it's all good. Well, we solved foreign policy. We need to get out. Well, you know what? It wouldn't. It wouldn't we just have it all collapse if we just got out, Josh? I mean, this is the argument you hear against it. It's like once we're in it, it's like, well, we can't just pull out now, or they're going to run amok. Who would we kill? And the country's going to fall apart. What country? Whatever Ours? one we've invaded. <laughs> because they didn't function for the last how many thousands of years before we came in there? And it's functioning so well with us in there, right? You know, those people have been around a long, stinking time. <laughs> Now I they think have? about it, they've been there way longer than we've been in, in America. Huh. They could probably go another few thousand years without us. In fact, I think that's what they want. <laughs> I don't know. Shut the door, I can hear that. Yeah. I can oh. hear you saying that you can hear that. Well, and I'm well, not I surprised. That was... I can hear what you're saying. All right. Can you hear the phone calls? No. Oh. <laughs> Let's take them. 458-TALK <laughs> is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Is this me? It might be you. It depends on who it is. Okay, this is George. George, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Oh, just um, some stuff you guys are saying, sitting there, you know, leave these folks alone or whatnot. Well, the thing is, is this is an issue for the simple fact that uh, they've hated us since way before that. And if you're anything of uh, the Christian belief, you'll know that. And it starts all the way back to the crusade days. And the reason why you can't let these folks have uh, nuclear weapons is in their beliefs. You let one of those radicals, like the guy that's in charge of Iran, have a nuclear weapon. Can, he's not afraid to use it. Can I ask you, can I ask you, you a question? Him, 
Hang on. Do you think that um, them hating us has anything to do with the Crusades? Um, I think them hating us has everything to do with the fact that we, yeah, we're not, you know, technically labeled a Christian nation, but majority of America is founded on just Christian beliefs. Okay, well, that's great. You brought up Christianity, and I'm glad you did. So, what did Jesus say to do the Muslims? Kill them all, Josh. Kill them all. Wait. No. What did Jesus say to do the Muslims? I am not all that well, read up on that part, so I can tell you he never said a dang thing about going to war with them and killing as many of them as you can to protect your country. Actually, a point of uh, now, reference here. Now, now here, oh, here's, here's the thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm putting a reference. Actually, before, before Muhammad, there was no Islam. So Muhammad was not born until 400 years after Jesus. So technically, Jesus could not have said anything about the Muslim religion <laughs> okay, so specifically. Say, well, he, he, he would have. The Romans. He would have. If he would have known about Muslims, he would have killed them. The Romans <laughs> were their enemy at the time. Let's take an enemy that they had. They had uh, the Romans. Right. And he said, if, they, if, the the enemy, if, if your enemy strikes you in your cheek, you should take his sword and ram it down his throat. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah. That's as far as I'm concerned, because of the simple fact, when you have somebody that believe that no matter what they do, as long as they're with uh, Sharia law or following a Quran. Uh, you, uh, I have you to know, question who. I have to question who believes what, though, because we're the ones going over there and killing them. Yeah, we're we are over there. We like. I don't know if you've checked out America um, in a while. We have the like the largest military ever known to mankind the world over. You can put uh, all you're the wrong military. on that one. <laughs> you're wrong on that one. We have because nuclear weapons, what? dude. Listen. We Listen, have you're nuclear. wrong on that, dude, okay. because the Chinese have nuclear weapons, and Chinese have over a billion people just in their army. And how and many countries are they in, invading? How many countries is China in right now? Uh, Tibet, for one. <laughs> Tibet, for one. Yeah, no, oh. you're right. They are in Tibet, and they Thank shouldn't you. be in Tibet. But that has nothing... <laughs> We are in and the whole Middle East. We're killing thousands of people in the Middle East yeah. every weekday or whatever you want to say. We have been there. It started this latest round. I mean, there there are books. In fact, yes, the book. A really good book to read is by Richard Mayberry, which is called, what is it, The Thousand Years of War? The Thousand Year War? Well, what mm-hmm. is it? Excellent book. I would strongly suggest... If you like to read, even if you don't, this would be a really good book. It'll give you a great understanding. I obviously about. don't. You don't have to insult me, there, guy. No, I, wasn't. I obviously do. You, no, he was not. Right. He's trying not insulting you. He's saying that a very uh, a good book that answers your question of where their hatred comes from would be the Thousand Year War by Richard Mayberry. I said if you okay. like to read, or even if you don't like to read, this would be one book oh, okay. that you should, anyways, because it's okay. a great book, has a tremendous understanding in it. All right. Well, hey, uh, hey, brother, thanks for the call. Going to let you go. We're going to up on the break here in just a minute. Uh, point of reference here, Josh, I, I wanted to go back here to something that, that was said about uh, Tibet. You said that China shouldn't be in Tibet. Well, by that same argument, you see, if you look at the, you look at the map and you look at where Tibet is, <laughs> by that same argument, then the United States of America really shouldn't be in any of the states that have, you know, any of the southern states. Because all of the southern, you know, all the southern states that declared their independence mm-hmm. from the United States of America, right? Shouldn't we not be in Georgia or Florida? Oh, I agree, actually. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, by that by that same argument, it, because you see, Tibet is a breakaway region of China. Right. And so, you know, to say that China is in a foreign country by being in Tibet, you could basically say that the United States of America is occupying a foreign country by being in any of the southern states that declared their independence back before the Civil War. I uh, actually agree with that. They are invaders. They invade. I mean, that's a whole other show. But I want to do that show sometime. Anyway, (laughs) but this whole thing about using Christianity to justify going to war, guys, you can't do that. Christ never told us to go to war. I just got a text here with a really good point here. It was Constantine when he made Christianity the state religion, and he went to war. By the sign used, conquer. Right. right. It was it was um, the state ordained church, which is, became eventually Catholicism, that went and started the Crusades. Right. We, if you go back and just look, listen to 
Ron Paul again, listen to the guy, listen to any Who's of his that? speeches from okay. when he talks about blowback from the 50s when we were in Iran. That's where it came from. We killed a bunch of people in Iran. We installed a dictator in Iran. And that guy murdered, mass murdered Wouldn't have anything to do with his the own discovery country. of oil in Iran. And the only it? reason we were there is because of the oil. Hmm. We are, we're less than 30 and seconds. I'm not saying I like... Uh, Oil? I, the What's his face there? Uh, I, the, the new, Tom. President Tom. The new guy. Muhammad... Uh, Gosh. I'm a, I'm a dinner jacket. I'm a dinner jacket. I'm, 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 a, I'm a dinner jacket. Yeah, that's the guy. I don't like the guy. the guy at all. He's a jackass. But, geez, you don't go freaking over there and nuke his country and kill hundreds of thousands of... Keep it here. Uh, welcome we back to Nottingham. So this is Far North Tactical's Saturday morning wake-up call, and you've got it on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live online at KFAR660.com. Uh, real quick, uh, the website, in case folks want to go and uh, blog about what they're hearing this morning and they want to engage in a little bit of conversation, or if they just want to take a snipe at you, what's the what's the website, John? PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. All right. And now, we definitely welcome the snipes. They're the most fun. All right. You know, we we're just talking on the break here. There, there's actually Christians in the Middle East. In fact, Iraq, the Christians were fairly free, if I remember right. I mean, they weren't getting uh, murdered or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of people there that hated them. But under Saddam Hussein, you could be a Christian or a Muslim or whatever you wanted to be, pretty much. The uh, Saddam Hussein didn't sanction going out and murdering the Christian churches, is what I'm saying. Right, but, th- but those who are in power there now do. Do. The mm-hmm. ones that we put in power are running the Christians out. Well, there are Christians in Iran. And I am going to have to say that I, I'm just going to throw this out there, folks, but during our wars for the last 10 or 11, 12 years, I guess it's their fault for being there, but I'm pretty sure we've probably killed hundreds of Christians in the Middle East. Hundreds and hundreds of them, because they're actually there. It's not. We're not just just Wait, the Western states aren't no, the only but, people but that Christian, have Christians. Christian bombs can tell not to kill Christians. Oh, of course they can. Right, right. No, well, they are smart. Because weapons. when the Crusaders went in to the Middle East so long ago, they only killed Muslims. Oh, they did. Yep. Right. They never killed other Christians at all. They never actually turned the Crusades against. Other Christian uh, settlements like well, you guys oh, read constant. a different book than I read. Oh, really? They didn't kill any Jews either. No. Oh, they didn't. No, none. Huh. <laughs> All right, All I of guess us. <laughs> everything we're just we're wrong about everything again. Gosh. Yep. All, of, <laughs> All of the lines are on hold. And four, four five eight talk is a number. Good morning. <laughs> this is KFAR. Who's this? You still there? All right, we'll try the next line. Good morning. Who's that this? Spooky. Hello. All right, so some folks spookier. called in, but then decided that they didn't actually. have You know, any it's probably to okay to kill Jews though, because they're brown too. Are they? Yeah, they are. Mm. I thought they were getting killed by the Arabs because they were not brown enough. Well, and they're not brown enough, but they're brown enough for us. No, they're not yet. <laughs> That's a religious war. I don't even know what yeah. this. God. Four or five eight. I mean, not, I mean, okay, let's just take it from. I mean, obviously, we can't win the argument by saying that mass murder is wrong. Okay, that's obviously not going to work here because everyone says, well, mass murder is good. I mean, that's war. Darn it, that's the way war is, and we're going to be killing women and kids, and then we wonder why they get pissed off at us and whatever. You're talking cognitive dissonance, though, because these are the same people who say that it's okay for us to go to war, but you know, murder is wrong. You can't just go and kill somebody on the street because you don't like them, but we can go and kill thousands of people or millions of people because that's war. These are the same people who say that stealing is wrong, but you can go ahead and have taxes because that's necessary for the government to function. Actually, those same people will legitimize murder... Of any type, as long as the state does it. The state can kill someone walking down the street. Yes. And they'll legitimize that, too. There's something wrong with your thinking, folks. You need to start ratcheting that up, that murdering people is wrong. And if you don't, if we can't win arguments that killing thousands of people is wrong, then uh, maybe we should take the argument that it's costing us too much stinking money. Two trillion dollars now to go to, to where we've been doing we're spending over a trillion dollars a year in the military budget. That's too much money. We're broke. Does anyone notice that we're broke? I mean, has that still been in the news at all, that we're broke? You know, that, that whole QE3, they're just doing that because uh, 
Well, what does easing mean, qualitative easing? <laughs> you think about it. What does that mean? It means the dollar is crashing, and, and they're trying to make it come down Slow. slowly. They're trying to ease the crash. They're not stopping it from crashing. They can't. All they're trying to do is ease it so that we don't wake up tomorrow morning and, and can't afford to buy a loaf of bread because it'll cost a bag of gold. There was something in the Bible about that, too. You know, you must, you've been reading the Bible yeah. for it. If you read I'll the Bible, stop. then you'd say that Jesus said to turn the other cheek instead of what our previous caller said, that Jesus said to ram your, your enemy's throat and, and sword down his throat. Hmm. I'd agree with that. <laughs> 458 talk is the number. Good morning. This is the wake-up call. Who's this? It's Winston. Winston, what's Hello, on your Winston. mind? How have you been? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, um, uh, I, I've got an advertisement here for a book. It's nice. called Power, Faith, and Fantasy, America in the Middle East, 1776 to the Present, by Michael B. Oren. And uh, 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 in the blurb down below it, uh, 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 they say uh, it's not only a terrific read, but it is also proof that you don't really understand an issue until you know its history. Yeah. What was his last name? Was Oren? Or in O R I oh oh just a second O R E N. All right, I'm gonna check that out. All right, uh, just all that pace yeah. on. Thanks, yeah, Winston. It, Winston. You know what? Read, yeah. uh, you're reading too much, Winston. You need to just sit back and watch some TV and let people tell you what to think. Okay. But he does read too much. <laughs> yeah. He always calling in here, stirring <laughs> stuff up. Four five eight dog is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey man, this is Billy. Yeah, Billy. What's on your mind? Well, you sound like you're getting awful close to saying love your enemies. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a hard thing to uh, – how hard – I mean, well, it's obviously hard. I mean, it's it's hard for us to do in our day-to-day life, isn't it? But, I mean, it's well, a pretty phenomenal concept, but I think it works. I mean, if Christ actually said it, it's probably a good thing to I mean, at least consider it. Well, it's one of the, that he said that if you do not do it, you're building your house on the sand. So it is that important. And I'll give you a key. Everybody out there listening, hang on to this. The the reason it's difficult to love your enemies because you really down deep heart don't believe that good is more powerful than evil. Hmm. Love your enemies is the secret to opening that power over your enemies so that you can stop bullets like the Matrix. You can disappear and they can't find you and you can walk right through them like Jesus did. You have to start by loving them. And if you truly can give yourself up, then you'll have on the end of mortal man. Well, what do you think about like our current, uh, our situation as a nation? Do you, what do we do? Okay, they came over here, they hit us, whatever. But did... Why do we got to... <laughs> What do we do? I mean, how do we say? How do you convince people to say we should uh, not be over there killing these people like this? It's wrong. I mean, look at what it's doing to our own people, our soldiers. It's ruining their lives. Look at how many. I mean, we've got the highest suicide rate in ever. history ever in terms of our armed forces. People that because they can't deal with the fact that they're over there killing people that have done nothing to us. Right, because we're fighting fire with fire, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But there's that you and I don't. Re- know what went on on 9-11 we don't really know what's going on over there we just know that it's all hell breaking up and the only thing we can do is to hold on to a transcendent authority a moral authority that says don't kill that there's good and good is more powerful than evil and jesus came down to give us a better way they could not touch him until it was time you have that same power if you will access it that you can walk amongst your enemies and they cannot touch you until it's your time. So once you have that power, what we do is we send missionaries over there, like the apostles, all over again, and we convert them. And they cannot touch us unless it's our time. Uh, Tim, uh, Timothy, don't you think we have to convert some of the people around us before we can start talking about sending people over there to convert anybody? I mean, like you said, we're fighting fire with fire. We have basically, as a nation, we've abandoned the Treaty of Westphalia in terms of how we are pursuing warfare, and and, and, and we've embraced the Roman concept of total war. Well, if you're going to expand it to 
was what we should do as a nation, then I can only echo Jeremiah, as a nation we should submit ourselves to our enemies and take the punishment. Take the punishment? Yeah. That's what Jeremiah told Jerusalem. If you'll open the doors to Nebuchadnezzar down your city, but if you continue to resist the just punishment. See, the Muslim world was prophesied by Jesus when he told the Jews, I have come in my Father's name, and you've rejected me. Therefore, another will come in his own name, and you will bow to him. We will. We just look at the pattern of the scriptures. He always uses the pagan world to destroy the one nation under God that won't obey him. Then he destroys the wicked ones. He's never going to destroy the wicked before he punishes us. Judgment begins at the house of God. And we're going to be punished by the by the Muslim church. It's all prophesied in the book of Revelation. We're going to be trampled by by Satan. It is given unto Satan to trample the saints. And he's going to do it through the Muslims, and we deserve it. Face it. Eat it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. That was uh, inspiring. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. How are you doing today? Good. Who is this? This is Kevin. How are you doing? Kevin, go ahead. Well, you know, we've been talking about all these other issues, and it would be nice to talk about something about our country for once, just about us and what we need to do as a country to prepare for this. Um, you know, I've been preparing for this my whole life. I've designed uh, generators and hydropower and you know, mining technology and all this stuff, and and I enjoy it myself, but I'm not able to help anybody because um, nobody's wanting to really do it yet. Um, when people really want to do something different, how do you um, how do you feel about the fact that the government has it set up now that all those resources that you've gathered for yourself will be distributed? Redistributed. Oh, I hate that. Now you're getting back into that again. I was trying to stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> right, but um, this government's aware that a lot of people have prepared, and they've prepared for that by passing executive orders to um, appropriate those things oh, and I don't, use them to their advantage. Well, yeah, well, we're we are dealing with uh, trample uh, being trampled right now. I got to admit to that. This I I can agree and see that uh, what the last caller is talking about, but. All we can do is just stay strong and 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 believe in in something better than what we're dealing with here. But um, my thing is is to survive all this somehow. I mean that's my big thing. Um, you know the the generators I built um, are up to six hundred percent over Unity. I ain't even worried about the world's problems. But um, I use it myself. You know I was on Channel Eleven News. I was invited down to the Tesla conference. Um, you know, it's, I'm totally, you can totally check me out. I totally check out, like I've told you. Um, I have a lot to offer, but it's not time yet for people to really take this seriously, so I'm not I'm not getting much interest in it. But uh, it is available. I, people don't have to worry about this. Um, the, the, the mining that I've done and, and the knowledge I have, I I recommend people just stay strong and, and keep your spirits up because, you know, I, I've amassed enough gold to take care of the debt. Don't worry about it. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Dang. He's... Oh, well. Uh... Wait, who is this? Oh, Battle Axe. Battle Axe. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Okay, this nonsense about the crusades, just going and going after those poor Muslims. For your historical information, they were up to Poland, Hungary, almost to Russia, charging through France. The French had had a great battle, and they fought them off. Then we had the two crusades that chased them back, and then the third crusade, which was a disaster because by then the greedy people got into it and we lost Jerusalem. Now Constantine, a German, a pagan, he won a war by saying they saw the cross, right? Okay. He did not found the Catholic Church. What they had the religion there at the time and turned into the Orthodox Church which broke away from the Roman Church at the time was and still is in Rome before Constantine came. So he did not make 
the Catholic Church. And the Orthodox Church was the rulers got in there, and they were far away from Rome, and they didn't want to send the money, et cetera, et cetera, and they broke away. Right. You had the the Roman Catholics in um, the West, and you had uh, the Orthodox in the East. Yeah, so they had nothing to do. The Catholic Church was there. The right. It was it was the same church. They just they changed the way their buildings looked, yeah. and... Um, they changed some of the rules. Same thing with Russia. You had Russia come down, and um, they looked at the two churches, and they really liked the way that the Orthodox churches looked a lot better, so they decided to go with that model, and they came up with their own version of that, that they still have today. It got along very well with the emperors and the Catholics sometimes. The churches, and the Roman Catholics started to tell people, you couldn't do that, as Henry VIII learned. So, <laughs> but that's neither there, but that is the fact. They were not these uh, the uh, Muslims darn near took all of Europe. They had a heck of a time. And like I said, the French finally, and I'm, my memory's dull there, I can't remember the big battle they had in France, which they won and shoved them out of France and out of, you know, Poland, Hungary, all the way down. So they have been a bloodthirsty religion from the start. And, uh, uh, <coughs> some, and religion are full of people. And I'm telling you, humans are the only people that will turn on their own and destroy them. It has nothing to do with religion. Absolutely not. And uh, as if you studied the history, you can see, it's they always have some excuse. You know, I, I think that, that you hit it on the head right there, Battle Axe. People always find an excuse to kill each other. And whether they're, using, whether they're using religion as an excuse or whether they're using politics as an excuse or whether they're using yeah. skin color as an excuse. Or nukes. It, it's well, it's, uh, in our family, uh, I had a great uh, uh, great grandfather, a baron, that left Germany and uh, because of the emperor and the nothing he fought, you know, on and on and on. And it is in the German. I blame half the trouble in the world on the Germans. We had been bred to conquer, to take. Uh, we'd been that way. If we fought the Romans, the Romans finally kind of got us under control, then made the mistake of hiring Germans as mercenary soldiers, as soldiers. And they turned around and gave it to the Romans. And it's the same thing we're doing right now. Over in the desert countries, we're giving them arms and telling them, oh, boy, you're going to be a good Democrat or wherever the, the local line is. And they turn around and we get it right up the rear again. That's been going on since Roman times. The military mind never changes. And uh, <laughs> they make the same mistake over and over and over. And it's just like now in the Senate. They wanted to cut off the money. And, uh, of course, oh, they can't do that because that will ruin our reputation in those countries. And I'm going, what? And, of course, it was John McCain that said that. So they voted against it. So now we're going to give them money. And Egypt, they're going to kill some more of our people. And they're going to turn against us. Uh, Libya is trying to apologize, I understand. But we've got all the other countries. It's too late. And now they must be punished. <laughs> they have killed one of our own. We must go and punish them. I mean, isn't that basically what we're coming down to? I mean, that we have, I, Battle Axe, appreciate the phone call. We're going to let you go. Thank you very much for calling in. Uh, you, you know, Josh, if, if we followed that same line of reasoning in terms of trying to cut off the money alone, um, basically, isn't it all going to get cut off? At some point, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at where we're headed financially right now. There, there's no stopping this train that we're on. We're gonna have to give them a trillion dollars so they can go buy some rice. Well, and just thirty billion. My, my dear mother and some other people that I know are they're they're absolutely flabbergasted that I'm talking about not voting in the presidential election, <sighs> and they are absolutely they're they're dumbfounded that that I would think that it would be okay to not vote for Romney, and and to allow. President Obama to get another term. They're like, don't you understand that he's going to take us right off the cliff? I'm like, Mom, don't you understand that so will Romney? Yes, but he'll take us there slower. Oh, so what? We end up off the cliff. Why don't we just brace ourselves for impact? 
go off the cliff and let things reset. It's like what uh, Hillbilly said earlier today. Embrace the judgment. Take it. You know you're going to get spanked. No, you have to give your consent to it to happen, Steve. I thought you had to shove it down the line. Yeah, Aaron, you got to get closer to the mic. You can't. I thought you had to shove it down the line. Shove what down the line? Shove it on down for your kids. Exactly. For your grandkids. Or their grandkids. Or their grandkids. And that's not how I roll. I would rather if things if, if things are gonna <laughs> if things are gonna fall apart. <coughs> I, I and we know they are, but I would rather have it happen in my lifetime so that I can have I can have something to do with helping to try to rebuild something new instead of just letting it fall apart for my kids. I don't want to leave my kids a pile of dog poo. Yeah, I wanted to go down that road, but I was gonna wait for the next hour just so we didn't jump around too much. Let's take this dude. Four five eight talk as a number. It's a gal. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, is this me? It might be. Not a dude. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember me, but Years ago, I called up about pacifism. I'm the Quaker girl that everybody thought was some guy who was what's crazy your, and scared of wait, everybody. What's your first name? Oh, my name's Joanna. Joanna, thanks for calling in. Go ahead. A Quaker? I want to talk about, well, yeah, I'm a Quaker, or at least we were. Anyway, I want to talk about Hezekiah. Anybody remember him, king in Israel, you know? No, yeah, he's the one who said at least it's not going to happen in my lifetime, right? <laughs> exactly. How heartless is that? We ought to stand up and take it now. We ought to do it the way Jesus said to, and not just some way that we're imagining, because we all know about the imaginations of man. So I wanted to just, you say that you're not a Quaker anymore? Well, I don't hold to a lot of things that they say, but I do hold to some of them. Yes, that's true. I'm pretty fascinated with the, the, I'm reading a book called Conceived in Liberty, still. Yes, David, I'm still reading it. And... The history of the Quakers in America is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Those people were beaten, murdered, tortured, burned, ripped to shreds by other Christians. By the yeah, by the Puritans. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and now they and now the Amish are guns. running too. Yes, and now the Amish are running too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are the Quakers places are, where they won't be persecuted. Is the Quaker community moving out? Uh, yes, as far as I know. All of those holy communities, the Mennonites, the Quakers, they're all running from the persecution. And friends of mine tell me that the good old boys that they're living around are going to stand up for them. But I don't see it happening. Yeah, I don't either. I've heard that the Mennonites have been evacuating the United States pretty pretty rapidly. I wasn't sure if the Quaker mm-hmm. community was, too. Our great-grandma was a Quaker. Hmm. That's right. Now, Joanna, let me, you, you mentioned King Hezekiah. You know, it was uh, interesting that to me that, that, that you, you would mention him because uh, Isaiah came to him and said, judgment is coming. And uh, he said, in fact, you're going to die. And Hezekiah turned into the wall and cried bitterly. And God said, okay, fine, I'll give you 15 more years, right? Right. If he had taken it then, he would have been able to repair his whole household. Mm-hmm. And it would have been a great blessing if he could have seen it. But he thought it was a judgment on his part, and he didn't want to take it. Well, it, get, it gets it gets worse or better depending on your perspective, because the guy, the king who was king after Hezekiah, who was he? Yes, his son. His it, son. Uh, I believe it was Manasseh. Wasn't Manasseh the most wicked king that Israel ever <laughs> yes, had? I believe it actually said he was the most wicked, and he wouldn't have happened if he'd have prepared his household and oh. died when he should have. And how, how old or was Manasseh? Was how old was Manasseh when he became king? Oh, my, I can't remember that. Well, 14. Sorry, I, again, was it 14? Do the yeah, math. Yep, exactly. So, and he wouldn't have turned them over to Babylon to be destroyed and captured. So basically, bottom line is, you're saying we know judgment is coming. We should be. We should put on our big boy pants and bend over and take the paddle. Well, you could if you want to remain attached to Babylon. Or, or you could flee right now into the hills and let the, be on top of the rocks that everyone is going to pray will cover them. But it won't cover them because it's going to hold me up. Amen. Um, maybe the moral of that awesome. story that you walk away with is um, maybe the Israelites shouldn't have had a king in the first place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think um, their misery was already prophesied 
um, before they ever took it. Now we, we've taken a turn. Uh, we've gotten really, really religious on this show here today, guys. Uh, you know, if you if doesn't you, bother me. If you well, it, hopefully, I mean, if you really believe what you say you believe, it's not going to bother you. The people that it bothers are people who dismiss religion out of hand, and and, and, they, and then they can't understand why it is these Muslims hate us so much. Well, I don't know if it disturbs. I mean, I have some friends that are atheist friends. I don't think it disturbs them as much uh, when we talk about something like this as it would disturb, especially if we're consistent, right? If you're inconsistent, then they're going <laughs> to hammer down. But I think that it probably disturbs Christians more when we talk about it than not. Because I'd have to say that that's in keeping with my mm-hmm. experiences. Yeah, it? because Christians are the ones that get ticked off when you tell them that you shouldn't be over there murdering Muslims. What? Christians are the ones that get ticked off when you tell them that you shouldn't be bowing down to the state. The state shouldn't be your god. Christians are the ones that attack us all the time. It's not uh, atheists. I mean, I rarely have. I never have. I've never had an atheist go, ha, you guys are idiots, you don't vote. But I've had a lot of Christians say that. A lot. Or, oh, yeah, I don't have any, I don't know any atheists that, uh, I know there's got to be, but I, in personal life, I don't know any of them that uh, are all pro-war, go kill everyone, and don't see the fact that while we're killing people over there, the state's killing people right here at home, preparing to kill more people. But Christians get mad about it. So that's why I like to talk about religion every once in a while is because I like Christians to get uneasy. We want them – because, I mean, my my view, Christians are the problem in the United States of America. They are absolutely 100 percent the reason why we are in the state that we are right now. When Christians in the 80s decided the right wing, the the uh, the Christian – The moral majority. Moral majority. Mm-hmm. Jerry Falwell. When those guys decided to take – what their job was, was to evangelize for Christ, right? And they decided, no, our job should be a part, to be a part of the state. They threw it all away right then because they wanted to be a part of the state. And the state doesn't have any re, anything to do with liberty. The state doesn't have anything to do with God. The state doesn't have anything to do with freedom or religious freedom or any of that. The state is anti everything good the state is anti-religious the state is anti-people anti-moral anti-ethical and you took the moral majority the christians decided we're not going to do our job anymore that you know our job is to evangelize to the unsaved that was their job they said no we're going to be a part of the state now and we're going to control the state well guess what the state controls them the christians are the problem the Christians are the reason why we are in the the state that we are in right now. It's because of Christians. You're really not enhancing my calm this morning, John. <laughs> We're up against That's the... That's my personal opinion. <laughs> well, hey, you pay for the show, so you can express whatever you want to. Coming up, another hour of live local talk after the Fox News. Patriots Lament is on the way right here on KFAR. Make sure you check out the website. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. There's also a YouTube channel, Radio Free Fairbanks. Give you an opportunity to listen to some of the previous shows right there. And we'll be back after the Fox News with another hour. If you'd like to call in, 458-TALK is the number. I won't bow down even if the whole world thinks I'm crazy. That's why we like that song right there. It's off their Rock What You Got album, Super Chick. Hey, hey, it's kind of a theme song for this show. Welcome. The Patriots Lament. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine, here to make sure that the Bennett brothers get on the air. Joining me from uh, Far North Magical, we've got Aaron Bennett on one side of the council. Good morning, Aaron. Uh, good morning, Steve. And from Bighorn Enterprises, the one who's making this show possible this hour, it's uh, Joshua Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. All Glad right. Glad to be back. It's good to have you back. Um, uh, the last hour, which is obviously a completely different show. We, uh, <laughs> Probably will be today. We, we we talked a bit yeah. about um, basically this idea of ramming it down other people's throats. The sword. Right. Yeah. And uh, really, if you, if you think about it, the entire political process is about ramming things down people's throats, isn't it? I mean, that's uh, yeah. what you were saying during the break. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. We ended the last one talking about the moral majority where Christians mm-hmm. decided to step into politics, step into the state, and instead of doing 
the Christian's job was to evangelize. Regardless of the state. Right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. I mean, what's the state have to do with it anyways? It should have nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it, in fact. But so instead of evangelizing, they decided, well, we're going to get involved with the state. We're going to be the moral majority. We're going to force people to be moral. So they got in there and they passed all these wonderful moral laws. And now we have people in jail, more people than the whole world has in jail, all because of most, most all because of these moral Ethic, not ethical, moral laws. And instead of the church, what their job was to do was to evangelize and persuade people to be moral. Instead, they said, let's use the state to ram it down their throats. They will be moral. So now people are just immoral. And they go to jail for it. They don't change their ways. They don't become moral or ethical because someone's convinced them and that's what they ought to do. They just have the threat of Mm-hmm. imprisonment and that doesn't do a thing as far as well at least as far as i can tell historically that hasn't done a thing for increasing the size of the churches has it no and it sure has well the churches are pretty dang big but i don't think they're very moral <laughs> <laughs> oh snap well i mean <laughs> what they've done the church has invaded the state and the state has become the christian church's god I don't doubt that a bit. It is their new God. The the old God, the, their Bible, is gone. Their new God is the state. They believe it wholeheartedly. They believe in it. They will participate wholeheartedly. They will go hold signs up. They will rally. They will get in gigantic... I mean, churches are places where people come to vote now. Churches open up their, their own their, their building or whatever... For people to come vote. That's disgusting. That's absolutely immoral, unethical, and disgusting. No, You're Josh, letting... if you don't do things like that, you end up with people like Obama. Oh, well, we did <gasps> do things like that, and we end up with people like Obama. We also ended up with people like George W. Bush. And, and Clinton. Mitt Romney. Romney. Obama. Mitt Romney. <laughs> and we have Paul Ryans of the world. I mean, come on, folks. You have failed utterly and disastrously. Your theory of controlling the state has come completely in circle and now controls you. You must worship it. You must bow down to it because it controls everything in your life and you love it. Bow to your God. I'm thinking of a tune by Nine Inch Nails right now. Bow down before the one you serve. You're going to get what What you you deserve. deserve. Head like a hole. Black as your soul, I'd rather die than give you control. <sighs> you know, when people, uh, a couple, three, it's been, I guess it's been almost a month now since, uh, was it primary ele- primary elections, the last one that they had? In August, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the last, okay, I haven't been on the show since then. So, Steve had a show about not voting. Convince me to vote, convince me not to vote, blah, blah, blah. Michael Dukes. And he gone. gave that testimonial last week. Yeah. I heard I heard I didn't get to hear the show yet. But anyway, so in the course of that time, we've I've heard people calling up different programs. This uh Steve's program, our program, Michael Dukes program, and people interacting with me or Aaron, and they say, Oh well, here's the reasons they think that we say don't vote. One of them is that, well, they just want everything to collapse. We'll just get out of it and everything's gonna collapse. Okay, point number one, that's wrong. I don't want everything to collapse. Everything is going to collapse. It doesn't mean I want it to. Not voting, me not voting, has nothing to do with making it collapse quicker. Okay. The second thing people, I hear them say when calling these different shows is, well, the reason that these yahoos, what were jackholes? I don't know. They call us, everyone calls us names, which I, Jack Hole's more preferable than Yahoo or something like that. I like that. That's pretty cool. So you guys want to call Steve Show or Michael Dukes, say, those Jack Holes on Saturday said, okay, just do me a favor. Well, at least we know they're listening. Yeah, they are listening, which is kind of interesting. So they say, those dummies on Saturday, well, they don't want to vote because they're one, another one of their excuses is that we've just given up. It doesn't do any good, so they just gave up. Well, blah, blah, blah. And then I've heard people say, well, maybe they're right. You know, maybe it doesn't do any good, but we just still need to do it. And blah. Okay, that's wrong also. It has nothing to do with giving up. 
has nothing to do with whether we think it does any good or not. Right. I've, how many times have I said that the reason I won't is vote is because it works? <laughs> and it has nothing to do with, uh, what was my first point? Oh, wanting the collapse <laughs> to happen. It has nothing to do with any of that. I don't want a collapse to happen because it's going to be stinking terrible. Mm-hmm. I like my life. I like going to work. I like to be able to go moose hunting in the, in the fall. And follow all the regulations and rules in that book <laughs> while I'm doing Which is it. why it takes you three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we hunted the last day. The first three, first uh, 19 days was reading the regulations and make sure we were legal. And it's like, okay, guys, go ahead and shoot that. And you probably were outside the regulations. <laughs> <laughs> so none of those reasons are actual reasons. The real reason why we say don't get involved in politics, don't vote is your consent. Don't give this evil monster your consent. That's what it's all based around. You have to decide for yourself, is the state an evil entity or not? Now, some people say, well, it's what we have. uh, Is it an evil entity or not? Does the state promote liberty at all? No. Does the state promote freedom at all? No. Does the state promote uh, ethics and morals? Is the state a uh, honest uh, anything? No, it's not. No, we've talked about that for two years. The state mm-hmm. is evil. And it's per- it's been unarguable, and a lot of people have tried, and their their case for that has been weak at best. Not They're, even at best. Not well, even at well, best. Look, look at just the track record. How many of us have been convinced... To go and bow down before the state versus how many of the statists have been convinced to give it up Ex- over you, over the last two years? Yeah, you, yeah, they don't give it up pretty much. But the point is, you withdraw your consent because this organization called the state is evil. We don't need more politicians. We don't need to be voting in more people to try to change the state because you cannot change the state. The state exists for itself, and the state will never get rid of itself. And no matter how much you try, you won't reduce it. You won't annihilate it. You won't do anything to it. It will grow and grow and grow until it falls on itself, which is going to happen. Don't be a part of of it falling on itself. Because what do you have to gripe about if your whole life you spent 50 years voting in this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy and you fought this election, you fought for that election, you held this sign, this sign. Well, then you deserve exactly what happened to you. Ron Paul is a great example. I love Ron Paul. A man among men. Never got one stinking thing done politically. Nothing. Ron Paul is the greatest statesman I know of. I would put him up against Thomas Jefferson. I'd put him up against any of them. The guy is a decent, moral, honest, righteous man and didn't achieve anything in politics. Politically speaking, achieved nothing. The debt has gone up by trillions since he's been in office. Abortions have happened by the millions since he's been in office. We've been in unending wars since he's been in office. <laughs> and, and more more wars than, than all of the years put together before. It, he's against all those things, but he cannot, and he knows it. You can't change the beast. We don't need more politicians. And even Ron Paul, I was reading a thing from the other day on Lou Rockwell. You guys need to read LouRockwell.com. There's so many great writers on there. And he was saying we need more, and Lou Rockwell was echoing this, but it was uh, from a speech that Ron Paul gave. We don't need more politicians. We need more entrepreneurs. We need more mothers. We need more fathers. We need more pastors. We need more evangelists. We need more. He just went on and on about everything that we need more of and less of going into the state. We don't need more state anything. We need more people. Where do revolutions happen? Do they happen in political parties? In the hearts and minds. Right. They don't happen at the borough building across the river. They don't happen in Washington, D.C. They're not going to happen with the Tea Party revolution. They're not going to happen with guns. There will not be a revolution within the system. The revolution, which we know from our founding fathers should be in our hearts and minds. Ron Paul says the same thing. That's why instead of trying to pass, well, he did try to pass a lot of bills to make points, but 
he spoke out to people and what was he trying to do change their hearts and minds hearts and minds that's what we need to do we need more people going out into business being successful in business and say i despise the state i don't need the state and I'm successful in this area. But what? Everyone can be successful in their own areas. Those people that love liberty need to show, hey, I'm successful in this area. I'm successful in this area. It's like the old body thing, you know, your arms, your legs, everyone. That's what we need more of. And we combine, not necessarily combine as we meet together or whatever, but combined, we're a huge. Liberty can be huge. We don't need the state to do it because the state won't ever allow change to happen. The state can't allow change to happen. It has to happen with us. Well, sure. State changes happen within the state. They have for the last 200 years. <laughs> it gets bigger. Right. There are changes. Thank you, Aaron, for pointing out that there are. There's no good change. How about that? There's been a nonstop progressive mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. in government. Right. It getting bigger and more tyrannical. Exactly. It, but going into government isn't going to change that. Right. Going into government is essentially um, making the problem worse. We're going to have this borough election. They're going to have <laughs> Natalie Howard in there, Michael Dukes, and Matt cool. Wants going to be gone, and maybe Lance Roberts going to get in there, and some other guys maybe, and they're going to change because now we have our... I hope all the quote-unquote good guys win, mm -hmm. and they get in there. And the people see they won't change anything. Mm -hmm. You cannot change anything. In fact, if you look at, the, the again, the history of even the borough, we've had more tax increases under so-called conservative governments. We have had more. more I mean, I mean that, that's, one of those, that's one of those things that, that uh, Hopkins actually got right in his campaign ad. He's like, under my administration, your tax rate has gone down. So why it, wouldn't we vote for him? Well, you know what, it, but it, it wasn't him that did it. Right. But the, the point is that the, you elect someone to go in there because you think that you're going to represent you. And what ends up happening is that they start making decisions for you. Because that's what you're really electing them to do. Exactly. Go in there and decide for me. Tell me what to do. Yep. Tell me what to do, Josh. Don't vote. So, anyways, going back to what I really started, it has nothing, our our theory or whatever, has nothing to do, not voting, not participating, has nothing to do with wanting a collapse. And it has nothing to do with, well, it doesn't do any good, so we give up. The fact is the state is anti-liberty. We love liberty. So we want nothing to do with the organization that destroys liberty on a daily basis minute by minute basis and destroys life and that's i mean if you yeah if you look at what's coming down if you if you face reality at all and look at history at all you see that that's has the potential at, at the very least to become way worse and we talked about last week how obviously you did an easy example would be nazi germany nazi germany slaughtered their own people i mean well mainly jews but they killed every type of people mass murdered right and anybody i mean they killed a lot of germans that weren't jews too anybody that uh, opposed the the state right but the point we made last week is that it wasn't um the german government per se that killed anybody himmler didn't go kill anybody with his own two hands and neither did <coughs> hitler mm. no exactly nor, or, nor did stalin or goring so who killed everybody who was people. killing who? People. The people killed people. the people. Of course they did. So the state can't even function without the people. In, in a sense, if you think about it, the state is just some kind of a mental construct. It doesn't really exist. No, it doesn't exist at all. It's a fake Right. Entity. Like Josh, Josh put it the best when he said, show me government. Let's go grab everybody and go down to the person that is government and put our grievances to them. It's not going to happen because you can't go to anybody. They'll say, I work for government. What did all the Nazis say? I was just following orders. Right. Following orders. They following worked orders. for the state. So it's not possible for the state to do anything. Without consent. Right. So that, that's my reason not to vote because the state is me. 
Here's a great example here locally. I mean, you guys saw those. I hate you. <laughs> what? You, you guys saw those signs that, that went up on on China Hot Springs Road a couple years ago that said no hunting. You remember those signs that went up all along China Hot Springs Road where people have hunted for decades. People have been hunting out China Hot Springs Road, and then all of a sudden these signs started popping up that said no hunting. And those signs were put there by a state worker who just decided to go ahead and do that. There wasn't actually any authorization to do it. So when the people complained about it, what they did to fix it is they went out there and they replaced all those signs that said, now no shooting, instead of no hunting. Hmm. The whole point of it, it is still not there because of any regulation or any law. It's there because they don't want their equipment to get shot at. Talking to a ranger who was there, he said, you know what, technically, if you were to even hunt in this area, even with a bow, you'd still get in trouble for hunting. Even though there's no regulation, even though there's no law, it's just some guy doing what he thinks is his job and the rest of us saying, oh, okay, the state is doing this to us. No, it's not. We're doing it to ourselves. Right. We, we, Consent. And, and whether it's the, the our democratically elected government or whether it's a king, what power does a king have to None. make people obey him? Zero. It's when people bow down before the king that that king has power. And when you bow down before the state, like you said at the beginning of this hour, Josh, you are making the state your god. Can, can a king force his people into subjugation? No. They have to willfully do it. That was the whole point of the... It's not even possible. Right. That would be like um, if we had some kind of a collapse and we were cut off from the world and I became supreme dictator for life and I subjugated all of Fairbanks by myself. No, you couldn't. You'd have to... I mean, you, you, you people would have to recognize power yeah. in you. They would have to give you power over their, over their lives. Right. They would have to subjugate themselves. Right. Not ain't going to happen. <laughs> I didn't... I'm not... Hoping for it. I mean, yeah, you're, you're pulling a you're pulling a Schaefer Cox here. And, you know, it's like, oh, you need to have somebody in charge, and it may as well be me. Bow down before me, I because shall be your king, be moral and, and I ethical. shall be a just king, and the people shall rejoice. All right, we've got all four of our lines on hold, and I recognize that these have been on hold, uh, some of them since the beginning of the hour. Yeah. So there might not be anybody there. You want to try it? Uh, I just want to make one last point. Just. I want people to understand, and I don't know why it's so hard, what the state is. The state is not your friend, so why why participate with him? Why participate with it? You don't go over to, okay, let's say you know some dude that absolutely hates you, absolutely hates your guts, wants to steal everything you have, wants to kill you, wants to... Do whatever. The worst things you can imagine. This guy. And you decide to go over and have lunch with him. Now that's pretty stupid. Because you know that he's sitting there in his home devising ways to screw you and to kill you and to steal everything you have. So why would you go take him lunch? I mean, well, as a Christian, you should be... See, now, that, you see, now, now you're going back to what we were talking about the last hour with Timothy, with Hillbilly. Right. Is, is it, maybe it's not a good example. But on the other hand, if you know he's going to murder you, you're pretty stupid to go over to his house to get shot. Right. The, the state's no different. So why do you want to participate in it with it when it wants to kill you? It does want to kill you. Right. You have people call here and talk about how many people are on entitlements and welfare and things of that nature, which in America it's become ridiculous. I mean, for anyone to say we're not socialists, to say we're anything other than socialists is just ridiculous, right? Because the only way that we're not is just because we say we're not. Right, what, it, what is socialism? Socialism is taking and redistributing, right? Yeah. Essentially, that's the gist of it. And in America, it's it's being done. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? Taxes. How much it's being done. Taxes. And Taxes. that whole concept of people getting into government to lord themselves over other people and to take from them, and we condone that. You know, now you're hitting on something here, Aaron, because I think if you combine what you're saying, Josh, with what you're saying, Aaron, is that, look... I, I don't like this guy over here. I don't like Josh. I don't trust him. I think he's wanting to kill me. He's going to want to take my stuff. 
And uh, so Aaron and I, we're going to get together, and uh, we, the two of us, are going to go over and take care of Josh before he takes care of me. <laughs> Yeah, isn't, right, that, but, isn't that what but, government but, is? Right, but people don't grasp it that way. That's what voting is. People don't understand that when you're voting for someone, you're voting to force someone else to do something that you want. Right. When, Obama, when, o, when Obama got is. voted in, the, all the other side of those people feel like there was something forced on them. You're forcing yourself on your neighbor. I don't care who you're voting for. You're forcing your will on someone else. And that is wrong. <laughs> Only if you believe that. Sure, you can that. you can not believe whatever the heck you want, but doesn't make. I mean, you can believe that the sky is clear right now. It's still a bunch of clouds. You can believe that that borough building's beautiful, but it's still an ugly piece of junk and hurts my eyes every time I have to look at it. Because we need there. a curtain here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a call before the break. All right, four five eight talk is the number. This is Patriots Lament. Are you still there? Hello. Hey, who is this? Oh. Hi, my name is James. James, go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, you guys have an interesting show, and I find myself agreeing with some of what you say and disagreeing with a lot, but I guess that's the point of talk radio. Um, one thing I wanted to, to – a um, couple things I wanted to bring up. Um, you were talking about, um, you know, the, the basically not being able to change the state from within, and um, actually I think that's something I'd agree with you on, and at the way I've – I've found myself raising it. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, um, you know, we've gotten to the point that we are incrementally, so we have to take it back incrementally. And I guess my question, and maybe you guys can come up with an example, but I have not been able to come up with an example when good has ever been able to overcome evil incrementally. <coughs> it, it always seems like it's a major, it has to be a major change. It has to be a um you know, a, a radical change. Yeah, I agree. Over. Let Let's answer that when we come back. We have yeah, to take can we, a break. You want to stay on? Um, I don't know if I have time. I'll try. Okay, All right, we don't, we'll we'll pick that up. We're up Thanks. against the Fox News, and we got another half hour of the show on the way. You've got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR a Local Talk Radio Online, KFAR six six zero dot com. And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Local Talk Radio. Caller, are you still with us? Yep. All right, that's James, right? Yep. All right. It's, uh, you, you asked a question before the break about when uh, good has overcome evil incrementally. And uh, the only thing that I've heard, the only one that I, that I have heard has been uh, slavery. Right, but I think, if, correct me if I'm wrong, you posed the question, uh, um, as far as you can tell, it doesn't work, but all your friends tell you essentially that we have to fix this incrementally and you, the question that you asked was is why doesn't that work right right well I, I i think i know why it works my question is is there an example of when good has overcome evil incrementally you know is that is that a realistic model um to think that it you know that it that it would work i think you have to look at what what we what you would consider the evil to be and evil would be um <clears throat> the opposite of liberty, which the op- liberty is just the freedom, freedom from coercion, right? So anytime you have a people forcing their will on other people, you're taking their liberty, right? Yeah. So how can this idea of legislated uh, government, which is forcing will on other people, promote liberty in the first place? You can't. Well, I. I think that uh, I mean the founding fathers used the idea of, of safeguarding liberty. I mean it was supposed to protect liberty, not necessarily grant or um, provide liberty. So and that that's the legitimate purpose of government. Um, yeah, and we're not obviously not there. I mean we're uh, so and that, I guess that was a question too. You guys have talked about the state being evil. Are you talking about? All governments in general, or just the condition that we're at now, or, or no, all, all governments, governments in, in general. general. Right out of the gate, um, right out of the gate, the American government immediately started being oppressive. Immediately. Well, look at the, I mean, what it, was it? The Whiskey Rebellion. Whiskey Rebellion was one example with George Washington, who King George said was the greatest man to ever live, and the Whiskey Rebellion. George Washington himself 
after he left office, regretted that he did that because he said it was unconstitutional what he did. Um, James Madison, or James Madison, back up, John Adams with the Treason and Sedition Act, the Alien and Sedition Act, which threw you in jail for saying anything bad against the Federalists and against his presidency. Anything you said, if you printed something, I mean, they threw dozens and dozens and dozens of people in prison for speaking out against John Adams and the Federalists. So right off the bat, yes, any and all government, it cannot protect liberty. I mean, John James Madison was the one, he's, and he got that from John Locke, was the only legitimate use of government. The only reason people have government is to protect their property. Right. That's the only legitimate reason to have it. But what we found out, what they didn't realize at the time, and I think that they would have a different way to look at it now, was that the only way for government to protect your property was to steal your property first. In the form of taxes and and things of that nature. To protect your property. Right. So for me to be able to have the use of force to protect your property, I have to expropriate your property to protect it. And as soon as you have the monopoly on protecting that property, you get to decide how much you're going to charge for that protection, and you get to decide how much protection you're actually going to give. So government fails, unfortunately. And our, well, it, our our system that was set up was um, what we the thing that we herald as being the best part of our government actually is the worst part where we granted power to Congress to legislate what was law. Right. And not only to let no, I take that back. We didn't grant them the power to legislate what was law. We gave them the power to create law. And it, it, and if if you go right down to the elementary ideology behind it, if if a a body is allowed to decide what was law, which they do today, right? And the law instantly becomes fluid, doesn't it? And if law is fluid, then there can be no justice in that kind of system. Because you can change it here, there, and everywhere. And it does get changed here, there, and everywhere. great example is you just look at what's happening here in Alaska with, like, the texting. How can something be completely legal one day and then the next day be completely Illegal. Illegal. And then look at hunting. Another great example. You go out there and you're standing right there on the border between two hunting areas. If a bull has got a foot on each side, if you shoot it, you're legal. And if you shoot it, you're illegal at the same time. And right. You but, can't, I mean, that's this is almost a mute point because we could point to every aspect right. of our life. That's what you get every with aspect. legislative law. Our founders created a system that creates law. That doesn't work. Well, I, I understand where you're going from a philosophical point, but I, I, the the issue that you have is um, you're not going – no, the world is not going to exist without government, what? without some sort of governance. And, no, and no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back you, up. You, mixed, you, mixed two mix, you mixed up two different words, Go- well, governance and government. Those are and, two different and, things. Well, government is the is what carries out the governance, and so there will be some there will be some form. And I guess where I disagree with you on the not voting is if if you don't have a participa- participatory form of government, then what are you left with? The problem uh, with participatory government is that it is the worst kind of government that you can have because anyone can get in, and the ones that do get in are the worst wretches in society. It's the way it's set up. You have to look good. You have to talk good. I mean, look at look at who we have. Why we got? Why is Obama running for president? Why do people even support him? He looks good. He talks good. He's got good style. Why do they have Mitt Romney? Actually, I have no reason, no idea why Mitt Romney actually was put in there. But anyways, he looks good. He's got lots of cash money to spend. He's got the hair. He can talk pretty well. I do like. He's got hair. all that kind of stuff he going on. Yeah, that hair is nice. Yeah. So that's why. Participatory government is the worst. I mean, the um, Democracy, the God that Failed by Hans Hermann Hoppe is an excellent read on why participatory government is the worst and it can never do anything but fail and ultimately be what we have today. Participatory government is the ultimate anti-liberty type of government. The big check and ping could never get away with what 
a president gets away with. A king can never get away with what the federal government, the state of Alaska, any of those get away with. The big check and balance on our government this whole this whole time, and from what I've gathered from reading history and doing the studying that I've done, hasn't been anything other than um, free markets. Free the for the ability for a person like person like Sam Walton to become who he became is what keeps us free up to this point. They can't put a lid on that. They've tried. Well, they've put in a pretty big lid on it, and you can see the more that they've able to expand that lid through, because of our technology getting um, more high speed, you've seen our liberties go a lot faster. But it's my personal belief from studying history and economics and things of that nature that the big reason that America took so long to become what we we came today is because of capitalism. If you, it, it's hard for the government to regulate when anyone can become Bill Gates. Right. Of good, if if you want to read something, Democracy the God that Fell, if you don't want to read it, you can Google it, and uh, there's MP3s and stuff like that with uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe. Excellent. I, anyone, please listen to that. You'll get a really good idea of where we're coming from, at least, <laughs> and you might... Hans Hopp's um, edict on that online is the impossibil- on the impossibility of limited government. The impossibility of limited government, right. The only way this could have worked is if we would have um, kept up with the jury, if the jury would have nullified. The only way this would have worked is if the South would have been allowed to secede, which they did secede, and they had the right to secede. They ratified the Constitution, and they unratified the Constitution. They said no more. We're out of here. That's the only way participatory government can work, when you are allowed to leave, to separate yourself from it. Once <laughs> when that you're separation... Huge, when it, you can, it, are allowed to not participate. Right. right. If It's not a participatory government if you're forced. Right. When <laughs> they were told, no, you may not secede, it was over from that day po- forward. When the Kentucky resolutions and the Virginia resolutions, those were quashed. It was over. And I think they had a good thing going when they... Uh, first started it all they only allowed people that own property to vote that, actually people didn't really even i don't think people understand how the voting went you didn't we didn't vote for a president congress right. did it was not it's nothing like what we have today i mean but our biggest problem is we don't have juries anymore mm-hmm. even though i do have a jury update for frank turney out there i saw that jury nullified minnesota's uh raw milk law and they were throwing some dude into jail for selling raw milk and the jury said nope he's not doing nothing wrong well that one was for frank i wanted to give that one out for frank because i always like hearing it when the people stick it to the state but right if the jury exercised their duty to, to judge law and to nullify law then to we would... nullify it that's the part that's the point to nullify no not guilty no law Right. So if um, they made it illegal to spit in Fairbanks and Josh got hauled in for spitting. I would, too. And and the jury decided that that was a ridiculous law. They couldn't take anybody else to jail for that because they could instantly cite that case law. Well, they could keep I mean, they could keep doing weeks. it, but if anybody if anybody had a brain, they, they could get it thrown out without even having a trial. That's the idea behind nullification. That's how the way our founders set it up. Yep. When secession and nullification was pretty much done away with, it was over. And it is over. And it was intended to be over. This I don't think this government was ever intended to be going on this long. Jefferson was imagining revolutions every 20 years. <clears throat> he was a radical, but he gave us a declaration of independence. Well, we were free for like six or seven years <laughs> <laughs> before before it got fully ratified. Yeah. Before it became the Constitution. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to in my mind trying to tie all of this together. Where we started in the hour talking about uh, bowing down before the state, and now talking about participatory government, and it, it, it a lot of it ties down to this aspect of just the very fact that you guys have chosen to not vote, and that you convinced me that I should consider not voting, and then I chose not to vote in the in the primary, and people are freaking out because it is destroying the legitimacy 
of their so-called participatory government. And it, with our choosing not to participate, now they're coming out and they want to make us. Yeah. You know, here, here's here's the funniest part to me is that um, I've never I never voted my whole life. I, the first and only time I ever voted was for Josh when he was running for borough. And, you know, I, all of my friends knew that I'd never voted. And But it, the reasoning behind none of them ever cared. None of them ever got on me about not voting. But as soon as I said that I wasn't going to vote on principle, they were offended by it. So you have... What was it? Seventy some percent of the registered the registered voters in this town didn't vote, and nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. But if those seventy some thousand or seventy some percent said that they didn't vote out of principle, people would see them as heretics. Right. Excellent and obviously, point. most most heretics, in fact, all heretics, they either should be burned or drowned. Right. Oh, right. And definitely shouldn't have radio shows. A guy wrote something about. Uh, a guy named Jim wrote some about that on the the Patriots Lament, which is what got me starting to think about it. And I'd never voted, and nobody ever cared until this year when I started saying I'm not voting out of principle. Now all of a sudden, I have people throwing sticks and stones at me. Well, they may break your bones, but their words will never hurt you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, I you know I. It all goes back, though, to what you're saying about the legitimacy, yeah. because you're taking their legitimacy away. Why do you think you get to participate in the government? Because it lends its legitimacy from it. Right. We think that it's it should be there. We think that it's legitimate because we can participate in it. That's the only reason that it's there. And that's the only reason they let you participate, no. folks, whoever they are. The state allows you to participate because you allow it to exist. Well, and, and you and you continue to make it exist by participating and giving it the... Go back to Saddam Hussein. We've talked about this before. Right. Every, I don't know how often it was, a couple of years, every year, they had elections in Iraq. It's not like this whole purple finger thing was something new. Those people in Iraq had been voting. It's just that the only person on the ballot was Saddam Hussein. They didn't have a choice. It was come out and vote for Saddam Hussein. Of course, it was their patriotic duty as good Iraqis to go out and vote and to vote for Saddam Hussein. I wonder if he got the majority. Every single time. That's and, amazing. Well, you know what? He had in his mind that made him the legitimate ruler. He and in and, and, and the minds of most Iraqis, he was the legitimate government. And what I what I think what we're trying to do here is to point out to people that that's all you're getting right now. You only have Saddam Hussein to vote for. You have a right wing and a left wing, and they're hooked up to the same freaking bird. And it's flying yeah. down along here. So you can vote for the right wing or the left wing, but you're voting for the same bird. And oh. it's got shot. And it's falling, falling, Obamne. falling. Let's vote for Obamne. And people are going to keep doing it. People are going to still keep getting after us because we don't want to do this. We need to, I mean, I've been told I need to renounce my citizenship, move away, which I'm planning on it, and all this and that. <laughs> well, the only reason you keep participating is because they allow you to. And as long as they allow you to, you give them your, your you lend them their legitimacy. All we're asking people to do Look at it for what it is. It's an evil, destructive device, and you participate in it, and you are using that evil, destructive device to put evil and destruction on other people. You're forcing your will on your neighbor, folks, when you go and do that. You're forcing your will. That's wrong. And Saddam Hussein was extremely oppressive to the Iraqis, right? Yep. Did he personally oppress them? I'm just Nope. His sons did. Well, his, yeah, his sons were pretty. Uh, yeah. his, his sons were sadistic in their personal circles. But the people were the ones that allowed him to exist. The people are the ones that kept on voting for him. And kept on but all of the people that um, got knocked into line. You know how wonderful, how super sweet would it be if this borough election, no one went down and voted? I think that would be so awesome. It'd be funnier than snot. What if this presidential election, no Republicans voted for Mitt Romney? Wouldn't it have been super... Well, then Obama would win! Okay, the same bird's there. Wouldn't it have been super sweet if the Iraqi people hadn't have... Um, voted. Not voted, but had not uh, followed orders and oppressed each other? Mm. What if the Iraqi people just did not go vote? 
What gave, like Steve said, what gave Saddam Hussein his legitimacy? The people voted for him. Right, and if nobody would have showed up to there, vote, they still went and voted. I bet. I wonder how security would have been if nobody voted for him. Every person that doesn't lend their legitimacy to this government takes a little bit of legitimacy away. It's a little chip in the bottom of the block. And that chip might be a, our, I don't know how to point, I don't know how to look at that. That little chip at the block, you're chipping away at the foundation. You're not, you're not tapping at the top, which is what voting is, trying to steer the wheel. You're knocking off the foundation. And it's going to topple. It's toppling now. You just have to make up your mind if you're going to be a part of the topple or not. Right. That's a good point, Josh. Voting is wrestling for the steering wheel on the boat or on on the ship, whatever. And not voting at all and not participating is knocking out the foundation. Because the foundation, it gets its legitimacy and its foundation from participation, right? Yeah. That's a good. I mean, that's great, Steve. What What would Saddam Hussein have felt like? What would he have done if not one person voted for him? I'm sure he would have found a way to uh, suppress the fact that that happened in the vote. I bet he would have left the country. He probably would have. He probably would have just uh, t- turned tail and run. I mean, you look at that has happened with. Uh, Time for me to go. <laughs> I, I, it, it, it happened. It's happened with an awful lot of other despots and dictators. They, uh, Pinochet didn't he flee Argentina? I mean, it, it Chile. doesn't. Chile? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, who was the one that fled Argentina? Um, actually, Pinochet, I think he was just voted out. Oh. He bowed gracefully because he knew. And then he ran away. Yeah. <laughs> he ran away. Time to get out of here. <laughs> Got one caller. Let's... It, but he ran because he lost legitimacy. Right. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, uh, morning. Frank Turney. Hey, when Frank. you mentioned jury nullification, I tripped over my new cat I got called Jury. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hate to be repetitious, but uh, I'm repetitious, Frank, when it comes to jury nullification. You know, Indiana, Oregon, Maryland, and Georgia spells out in their constitution that the jury has the right to judge the law as well as the fact of controversy, plus 24 states under preamble of free speech recognizes uh, jury nullification. Uh, I got this email from Elio Jones, who is the national director of the fully informed jury here uh, last week. Uh, Governor John Lynch, uh, New Hampshire, signed a bill that passed the House and the Senate starting in January 18th. Defense attorneys can exercise the right to speak to the jury regarding jury nullification rights. So that really sets precedent. But I just don't wonder what happened at our last Constitution. I think they dropped the ball. Yeah. When it comes to the the role and the power of the jury. Did you uh, hear me talking about that uh, in Minnesota where the jury found that guy that was selling raw milk not guilty? Wow. Yes, I did. Yeah, yes, that's I did. Pretty exciting. Exactly. It's well, funny that of... it's funny that we um the first hour we were talking about Quakers. Right. Yeah. They're the ones that did the raw milk, right? No. You bet the, you, William the Penn. William Penn trial. Yep. William Penn, at that time, during the colonial days, it was against the law uh, uh, to speak a different religion because the government, the church was run by the government, and, uh, and uh, William Penn and his followers uh, Or was were, the government ran by the church? I think that would be more accurate. Right, they were arrested. Yeah, really. I think them jurors also set precedent regarding the free speech, freedom of spam- assembly uh, in this country. Just like the Peter Zinger trial, I've been trying to get the news minus over here to do a story <laughs> on how their freedom of press came about, and that was the Peter Zinger trial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. People don't even understand. I mean, we look at uh, no government granted us all those rights. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I called in yesterday uh, at Shooter's Corner regarding uh, the United Nations uh, trying to uh, ban ammo. Of course, they've been trying to take small uh, guns away from Americans. But I did receive a letter from uh, Rand Paul and. Uh, Dudley Brown and indicated in the hearings is two days after the recent tragedy, the Colorado Theater, gun grabbers tried to cash in by ramming a sweeping ammo ban through the U.S. Senate. And I'm still trying to find out that bill that, was, that they tried to ram in. Well, sounds like we need to get more fully informed juries. So when we start doing some underground ammo, then uh, people can be found not guilty for it. Well, I tell you, I really appreciate you and Aaron uh, being out there. You know, uh, Life is short, and uh, somebody's got to carry on. 
and I appreciate this show, uh, Patriots Lament. Thanks, Frank. We Thank sure you. appreciate you, man. You are a a standard bearer for liberty in this town. Absolutely. An inspiration, really, if you think about Heck it, because yeah. he was out there dressed in that uh, prison garb protesting <laughs> yeah. against the judges. When I got here in 1994, I mean, I have seen him out there for at least 18 years. He did that at the Republican State Convention. He's wearing the garb and holding up his sign. The guy rocks the party. Mm-hmm. I've heard, when I first moved to Fairbanks 10, 11 years ago, and I heard about Frank Turney, people, it was always, you know, all of that crazy Frank Turney crazy guy. Frank. Crazy Frank. Crazy Uncle <laughs> Frank's up to it. Again. He wants to let people make up their own minds, that crazy fool. And then I got to know the guy, and I was like, holy cow, this guy's rock solid. People need to quit calling him Crazy Frank and listen to the guy. The guy knows what Liberty's all about. If there are more Frank Turneys around here, we didn't need that stinking building across the, the river there. If we had more Frank Turneys, we wouldn't have so many people in prison. Actually, you know what? If we had more Frank Turneys, we would probably need more buildings like that. The only they'd have to have bars on them to put all the Frank Turneys in. Because <laughs> it is people like Frank Turney that make that building across the way. And if you can't see it in your own mind, it's the Burrow Building. It, you, it, it makes those buildings like that crumble under the weight of their illegitimacy. That's right. If we had a bunch of Frank Turneys, they'd march around that building seven times and it'd crumble to the ground. <laughs> if, we a just, metaphor. if people would just exercise their their duty to judge the law, things would be definitely be different. The only vote I believe in. I mean, people, it drives me nuts. You're... Your duty, I've heard it's your duty, you heard it's your moral duty, your ethical duty, it's your patriotic duty, it's your on and on and on to vote in an election. Bull stinking crap. Bull poop crap. Bull, Moose poop. Bull duty? Bull duty looty. It's just like the Schaefer <laughs> Cox trial. People, your duty, people voted there with the state. Right. Your duty is a jury vote. Your duty is to say not guilty. That's your duty. That's the only vote that's your duty. You want to talk about founding fathers. And that's your only and vote that's effective. That's the duty that Jefferson wrote about, Madison wrote about, Adams, J- John Adams spoke about it over and over and over and over. The citizen's duty to judge the law and to throw it out and to say not guilty, to stop the state from throwing citizens in jail. When you say guilty, you're throwing yourself in jail. You're throwing your own fellow citizen in jail. That's wrong. Your duty is to say not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. That is your duty to vote. And yet how many jury. people how many people shirk jury duty? They, they don't do want to everything do they possibly can to get out. You should be we should be marching down to the court signing up and say, "Where do I sign up? I want to I want to be a permanent juror right here. Put me on that court so I can say no." Hmm. No to the feds, no to the state. No I've been called in for jury duty seven times in my life, and I never make it on. Oh, it's because you have an opinion? I got to be on the grand jury because I stayed silent. I stay silent, too, and I still never make it on. I don't know you, what it you is. You look dangerous. Well, you look kind of crazy. Yeah, he is pretty yeah. ugly. 458 well, Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Joanna again. Hey, Joanna I again. Just wanted to re- I just wanted to remind you, you said that if people would march around their buildings and they would crumble. I know that's a, a nice ideology or a, a, a wonderful fantasy in my book. Uh, people have tried marching and voting. The, the abortion clinics have not fallen as far as I can tell. We need people to actually live it. Yeah, we that's need, a good point. The, we need women who will have their baby, as I have. I know it's hard. I know it's frustrating. We need people to live it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You know, and thank you, Joanna. And you know that ties into something you were saying before earlier today about how you can't make people make the moral choice. People have to choose to do the right thing on their own. If they are forced to do it, then it, it's kind of again, it's illegitimate. Well, you're forcing them to do it, and then you're forcing me to pay for them to go sit in jail because you wanted to force them to do something that you don't like in the first place. Or even better, you're getting forced to pay for those abortions. Oh, oh, snap. Wow. All right, this has been Patriots Lament right here on KFAR, which is a paid program made possible by Bighorn Enterprises and Far North Tactical. And you can contact the show online at patriotslament.blogspot.com or check us out on Radio Free Fairbanks on YouTube. Talk radio for the interior, 660 AM.